And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, Taylor Barr, left the summer! Yeah, hell yeah! Let's go! I appreciate you being here, dude. How has your day been? Pretty good, bro. I, uh, been kind of busy the past, like, you know, couple been... however long. You are crazy busy, crazy busy. And what's cool too is you're you're in so many projects. Like earlier today, I was jamming phone booth. Phone booth is like a complete 180 of the sound I'm used to uh, from you. And I'd actually like to start there. What what inspired the sound for phone booth? Did you just want to try something different? Man, I've been a fan. By the way, sorry, I have to do this outside because I have fucking roommates. No worries. And they're inside. I just don't want to be hella loud and shit. But uh, regardless, I uh. I was I've been a fan of like the 1975 and like when the weekend dropped that one album I was a fan and uh I just was like man like the pandemic had just started and I was like I really want to like do some sort of uh some sort of like pro like pop project so I just did it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I mean I dig the sound. I dig the style. Um how did how's it been working with everybody in the big 6 so far? It's been sick. I mean, honestly, it's a little bit stressful because we've been going through, like, member changes and stuff just because of, like, labels and management and stuff. Just, you know, hard to hard to get everybody on the same page. But, uh, honestly, every one of those dudes is my ho are my homies, you know what I mean? So I've had a great time. Do you recall the the first album that, that stuck out to you that made you want to be a vocalist in general? Bro, honestly, Hellbound by Fit for an Autopsy was, like, one that fuck I was yeah. just, like, I was, like, fuck, bro, I want to do, like, heavier vocals. But, like, when I was younger, I was, like, Stand Up and Scream by Asking Alexandria, I really, like, fucked with. I was, like, man, this is cool. And, uh, like, I fell in love with it because I was just so young. I mean, nowadays, I don't really listen to it as much anymore, you know, but, like, that's just, like, what kind of inspired me in the moment back then. I was, like, oh, man, this guy. It's so fucking like heavy, dude. And then I, you know, obviously found heavier bands after that. But that was like my gateway drug for sure. Hell yeah, my uh, my co-host today is Spaz. Spaz is Taylor. Spaz, what question do you have for, uh, what up, for Taylor? Spaz. What over uh, Taylor? Um, I like to scream. I'm a drummer, but um, your screams are like you're just like what training did you do? Like, uh, did you take lessons or you just fucking sat in the bathroom just all night? Uh, honestly, I was homeless for like a year, almost two years of my life. So a lot of the time that was like my de developmental years of like doing vocals. Mm -hmm. I was just like in my Jeep and I was just like screaming along to songs in my Jeep until I just kind of figured it out. And I lied to get into my first band. They were like, yo, you do vocals? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I do vocals when I had never done that shit a day in my life. <laughs> and I was just like, cool. And I just had, like, a natural kind of, like, knack for it. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, cool. Right. Like, this is, like, something that, like, I it kind of comes somewhat naturally, you know? But, like, I obviously, you know, I after I fell in love with it, after doing it, I was like, oh, man, like, I want to do this the correct way. So I went out of my way and, like, learned a bunch of, like, real techniques and, like, the right way to do things. And I'm just – I'm, I'm a forever student, bro. Like, I feel like I'm still learning. Like, I, I want to keep, like – like rounding out my craft and everything that I'm doing. So I'm just, I'm forever just learning new things and new ways to do things. Is that something, awesome. is uh, that, something that you, I'll, I'll go back to you in a second, Spaz. Is that something that you yeah. notice weird techniques from, from the other six when you guys are in the studio together? What do you mean? Like, like, let's say Will or, or Joe were recording a part and uh, you just notice them doing some kind of technique that you've never practiced as far as like, I guess. Yeah, I'll ask him about it, dude. I'm not afraid. I don't have an ego, you know what I mean? So I'm always just like, I'm like, bro, like, how'd you do that one specific thing? And, you know, like, I become homies with them. So it's kind of like a natural conversation. And it's not weird whenever I bring it up. You know, I mean, they, I mean, they did, surprisingly enough, they did it to me, too. Like, I had Dickie ask me how I did a couple of my screams. And I was just like, holy shit, dude. Like, why is this dude asking me? how to do specific things and i just you know like i said bro like honestly everyone in the big six is like a forever student bro like i'm always just we're always like talking to each other about how to do things or you know the better way of you know making something sound even crazier than it was when we were doing it in the first place oh, yeah. Spaz, i cut you off on the last question i'm sorry 
yeah. Um, so typically, I mean, your instrument's your voice. So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, uh, myself included, that uh, don't work on their voice, uh, know how to properly scream. Um, right. You know, like what advice would you have for the chat if somebody's out there wanting to be a screamer, regardless of whether it's the back in the throat, the guttural, like, you know, there's so many different levels of screams. What would you recommend or what could you tell people if they want to be a screamer? Um, I mean, like I said, just continue to like reach out. I mean, re I, but the biggest thing that I used was just reaching out to people and being like, Hey man, like, can you explain how you did this to me or like watching someone do something and like trying to like reenact it or like trying to figure out like through co like trial and trial and error, like it's, it's a big thing as well. You know, you just have to be able to, to absorb, you know, like just like people around you, like you have to be able to like take things in and like, for like, I, like I said, I'll always like lean on the forever student thing. And like, just the sure. second that you feel like you already know something, you'll never learn something after that. You know what I mean? And you'll just stay where you're at. So if you're just like learning how to scream, like I would really just like, dude, just like absorb as much as possible from people that, you know, may know more than you or that you're curious on how they do things like go out of your way and ask and just, you know, like I said, just be a student. Who would be your top three influences as, as screamers, like straight up across the board? Phil Bozeman, CJ from Thy Art, and uh, I don't know, man. Uh, fuck. Yeah, probably definitely Phil, CJ from Thy Art, and fucking probably Adam Warren from Oceano. I, I took a lot of inspo from him at, at first whenever I was trying to develop my lows. Yeah, he's bad. I wanted so bad to be a mixture of those three vocalists for like my entire career. I'm going to hit you up on the sidebar eventually to get some uh, tips from me if you if you don't mind. Yeah, dog, hit me up, dude. My shit's always open. That goes for, for sure. anybody, you know, listening you. to this. Taylor, I like to give everybody uh, that's a guest on the show an opportunity to plug or promote anything that they'd like. If there's something that you'd like to promote that you guys that you're working on, uh, shout out media, social media links, whatever, whatever you want to plug. Uh, we got a new song out, Primitive Verge, featuring Joe Bad. Go stream that shit. It's on all streaming platforms and YouTube. We have an album that's about to come out in a couple months. So be on the lookout for that. And also follow Left to Suffer at Left to Suffer on all social media. And myself is just Taylor Suffers on all social media. Let's do a fun question. And check out Phone Booth. That's cool, too. Yeah, check out Phone Booth as well. Uh, <laughs> let, let's do Let's do kind of a fun question. Every every artist has an absolute terrible show. Do you recall the worst show you've ever you've ever had? Uh, everything went wrong in this particular gig. I mean, I have one that the preliminary stages sucked so hard that we didn't play the show, and then I also have one that was a nightmare where we also didn't get to play the show because our fucking equipment all just malfunctioned all at the same time. And that was like, our, so I'll just tell the one, I don't want to get into the story of the first one because it's just like, it's too fucked. But um, <laughs> the other one, we were playing in Dallas and our, we got on stage and, you know, we, I guess just time ran late for sound check. So we didn't get the sound check and we get on stage and we're trying to do our line check and like none of our equipment worked. Like none of it was turning on. And our interface was blown, so we couldn't run any of our tracks or, like, any of our... Because our guitars are digital, so we literally couldn't run anything. And uh, so we sat there on stage for me uh, for, like, probably, like, 25 minutes. And then our, our set time was, like, 30 minutes, so I finally just picked up the mic and I just had to turn around and be like, well, we guys, we can't fucking play. Sorry. Like, it was, like, the most gut-wrenching thing ever, dude. It was so bad. I, like, sat in the fucking van for like 15 minutes after the show, just like borderline crying. I was like, bro, this sucks so hard. Like, dang. So nice. yeah, that was nightmare fuel. Where, where have you not played in the world that if you had like a, a, a giant globe in your house, you've circled this country, you want to hit this country. And, uh, particularly Australia, Australia. Hell yeah. I imagine, yeah, uh, play in Australia super bad. It's gotta be coming sooner or later. I would think. Yeah, I would say probably next year we'll go out of the country. Maybe this year at some point, just depending on what we get offered. I mean, we've gotten uh, 
sniffs for a few UK things already that we just don't feel like we're completely ready for. So we're not going to, you know, jump the gun too early and make bad situations for ourselves. We want to be smart when we go out there. If somebody wanted to pay you for your talents and uh, get a guest feature, how would they go about that? Uh, DM me on any of my social medias. I'm, I'm honestly interactive as fuck on social media. Like, I check out, I try to check out all of my DMs, but mainly, like, I'll go through and skim whether you're talking to me about a feature or, like, lessons or something. I'm very uh, interactive and, like, you know, co cool. connected with people on the internet. So you can just hit me up and we can discuss things. Did you bring any hot sauce? I did not. It's okay. No I'll, worries. I'll, I'll do it for him. Okay. Because I like to do some trivia. If you're down to do a quick trivia portion, I need to know yeah, what... Yeah, for sure. I'm probably going to suck at this, but yeah. You okay. get to pick the trivia, though. What movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Oh. Probably Step Brothers. Okay, cool. Give me just a minute, Spaz. Go ahead and shoot off another question. Uh, dude, I was like sitting here trying to look you up on uh, your social media. Uh, so I, I saw the band page. So how would I find you directly? Uh, what is it, Instagram? I'm just Taylor or... Suffers on all, on all social media. Taylor Suffers. And we're, you guys are out of, of what state? Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. Um, I'm from Georgia. Texas. Uh, real fast. What was the, the club that you guys played in Dallas? That Or you attempted to play? The dime, I think it's called Diamond Ballroom. I think that's okay. what it's called. Diamond yeah, Ballroom. we played there twice. We played there once with Tarnifex and Spite and Oceano, and then we played there with Upon a Burning Body when everything went wrong. Nice. Well, do you we're have going any plans? There. Do you have any plans to come out our way? Well, I know BG SoCal, but I'm NorCal. Do you guys have anything in 2023 that you're going to work it out here? Oh yeah, dude. We'll we'll be touring plenty this year for sure fuck yeah i want to make sure i get out and see you guys yeah, they, sure. they they yeah, they do yeah, a lot I'll of fucking, shows i'll list you guys just let me know hell yeah we appreciate oh. that that's awesome let's I'll see like let's see if you've seen Step Brothers as many times as you say <laughs> they're at the dinner table nervous, and nancy mixes ketchup and mayonnaise and calls her delicious condiment what oh man mayo chup it, it, that is not correct. It's something sauce. I'll give you a hint. It's something sauce. Yeah, I don't know that one. That one's that's like so easy. Oh my god. That is a buzz. I'll give you an easier one in a bit, but it's fancy sauce. Let's see what had you gotten it, what it would have landed on. Oh hell yeah. I don't even have it fruity in here. Pebbles. I don't even have it in here. I'd have to go grab it in a minute. But they, they literally make a Fruity Pebbles syrup. It's like a waffle syrup, but it's it's Fruity Pebbles flavored. And it's bomb. It goes on everything, man. I swear to God, BG promotes that shit every it's show. It's so damn good. Fruity Pebbles <laughs> syrup, huh? It's so good. It goes on pancakes, ice cream. <laughs> Apparently, it goes in beer also. Um, let's see. It might even help locals, you know. You never know. <laughs> Who knows? Shit, I might buy it. Fuck, <laughs> Is there is there a, a particular genre like as as phone booth is so different than than suffer? Is there another genre that you've kind of considered dabbling in and just not time yet? Uh, pop punk. Really? Yeah, I love the story so far. That was another developmental band for me. Very cool. Never would you ever get down on like 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 dubstep or the EDM world? Uh, yeah, I actually have a collab coming with a pretty decently sized dubstep artist in, in March. So, oh hell yeah! But we're, that one's not announced yet. Uh, no, not announced <laughs> yet. It's uh, it's honestly probably the biggest feature I've ever done. So, wow. So, uh, real fast, um, do you have access uh, to a DAW, and you can do like if somebody wants to collab with you, you use Pro Tools or something yeah, else? Yeah, I have Logic. Logic, okay. So, like, yep. if somebody wanted to work with you and be like, yo, I, I just need something, a scream, it, it could be, like, a, a verse or a chorus or just, like, straight, just guttural scream, you can throw it you down, do it all. it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all. bro. I, I literally, bro, I do all of my, like, little Instagram. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram. Probably not. But uh, well, today, oh, all of my Instagram I do. I do by myself. Sweet. Yeah, I've seen, I, you, so, you do like, covers I all the time. I think you did Autopsy, what, like, the other day, too, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Those are I did see too. him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to reach out and touch you, per se. For sure. Yeah, come touch me, dude. <laughs> We're going to try this one more time on a Step Brothers trivia. This is an easier one. Come on. No, it's fine. I'm just... I'm Derek's, so bad under pressure, bro. <laughs> Derek's family is riding together on the way home, and they all sing a song together in the car. That's Sweet Child easy. of Mine by Justin Rose. That is correct. Oh, yeah. That is correct. Oh. That one just doesn't even apply to. Bro, to that was so easy. Well, if you stump, if I stump the guess the first time, then I try to go an easier one the second one. But uh, it says ask good. weird questions. Uh, Taylor, what's your what's your go to munchy snack? Oh man, probably okay. So probably toasted brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts with butter on top of them, bro. That's my jam, dude. What? That sounds fire. That bro, they go fire. crazy. I'm telling you, dog. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, is there... I do have one more question. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if Go I for could. it. Um, um, uh, regiments, like, uh, if you're about to go on stage, besides doing your little, um, your scream up, scream downs, do you do, like, a mist or, like, uh, honey, hot water, hot tea in your throat? Bro, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm the worst vocalist when it comes to that shit, dude. I'm, like, literally waking up, and I'm, like, if I can talk properly, I can scream properly. So I'll just be, like, I'll do, like, some humming. I'll be, like, and then I'll go, and then just go into it and shit. Hell but, yeah. Uh, other than that, like, it's really, I'm not very extensive on what I do with my voice. For sure. Cool. Uh, Taylor, we'll just do one more question, then we'll let you go. And we appreciate your time. This one's kind of a serious one. Uh, it is It is called Local Band Smokehouse. We do have a lot of local bands that watch the show. What is a piece of advice? Let's say a band is just forming today. Maybe there was a mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want a starting up band to make. Could you give us some advice? Uh, don't start releasing music too early. Have shit in the canon, bro. Like You got to have things lined up you can't just have one song done and then just throw it out and then like then you're working for the next two to three months because at first like you got to drop money into the project you know what i mean everyone knows you got to pick out some personal money some more than others you know what i mean depending on the band and uh i would just yeah definitely don't count your chickens before they hatch like make sure you have a like a, a vast repertoire of music before you start throwing it out on the internet and make sure that you're, you know, doing it properly, putting money into ads. Don't fucking just throw it on the internet and then post about it two or three times because you're not going to get the best out of the reach of that song. Nice. A, a promotion strategy, so to speak. Make sure it's all ready to go. Back. That's that's totally truth. I mean, that because if, if you're, if you strike it gold also, or you're that band, don't it's have, gonna hit. Don't have people in your band that are alcoholics. That's a good point. I don't know about they can party, that. but make sure they can still complete the show <laughs> and not screw make up. Make sure that they're functioning alcoholics. And right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Taylor, we'll let you go, man, and we appreciate your time so much. Much success, much love. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay uh, stay awesome, brother. And uh, hopefully we can touch base maybe six or seven months from now and just uh, see what you've been up to. Yes, sir. Anytime, bro. You fucking let me know. I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you so much. Taylor Barber of Left to Summer! Yeah, yeah, hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Thanks, dude.